So in this video, we're going to be talking about the transparency carrier density. Transparency carrier density. Abbreviated uh, NTR. That's the, the symbol that's generally used for it. And this is the carrier density uh, we said in the last video where our Fermi level splitting delta EF is equal to the band gap of the semiconductor. And that's the minimum possible uh, delta EF in order for us to get gain uh, when we have any available states. So our photon energy has to be at least equal to our band gap to get any interaction with our material at all. But uh, we also need delta EF our, or our photon energy to be less than delta EF, which means that delta EF has to be at least the band gap energy. But if we try to figure out what NTR is using what we know so far, so using the, the Boltzmann approximation, uh, we know that this is our intrinsic Fermi energy. Let's call that EFI. And this is slightly higher than mid gap. And that's very important here. So this is uh, EG over two, or if we wanna be precise, EC plus EV over two. Um, now we know that EFI uh, minus E mid, uh, this can just be related to the um, the effective masses. So this is three fourths times KT times the natural log of the whole mass over the electron mass. And so usually that's about uh, two KT roughly. So in order for Delta EF to be uh, equal to our band gap, we need our valence band Fermi level to be roughly right here. So two KT above the valence band edge and our conduction band Fermi level to be up here. So if they were offset initially by about 2kT and we're using the Boltzmann approximation, then this is going to be, this separation is going to be about 2kT. So 2 times kT, where kT is just our thermal energy. And this now, our Fermi level splitting, delta EF, is equal to EG. But we've got a problem now because the Boltzmann approximation assumed that we were operating in this region. So it assumed that our semiconductor was non-degenerate, non-degenerate. Or in other words, that our Fermi level uh, was less than about 3kT uh, from the band edge. So about 3kT from the band edge. And that 3kT is a somewhat arbitrary number. I think this gives you about 1% error in your calculations. And we are badly violating this assumption with the conduction band. Um, not so badly with the valence band, so we can probably get away with it. Uh, we're just probably going to incur some error, but we're badly violating the assumption of non-degeneracy in the conduction band. So we need to figure out how to calculate uh, the total number of electrons now in a different way, so not using the Boltzmann approximation. So one way of doing that we know is always valid is just using the Fermi-Dirac integral. So we can use uh, the Fermi-Dirac integral, or n is just 2 over root pi times nc times our Fermi-Dirac integral of order 1 half. Uh, and don't let the long name scare you, it's just a, just a function like any other. Um, and this a to c value was just this distance uh, so this distance above the conduction band divided by kT, or EFC minus EC over kT. And if we wanted to be really precise, we could also calculate the holes this way, uh, 2 over root pi NV times F1 half, uh, now of A to V instead of A to C, where A to V is just this distance below. Uh, so if the Fermi level were below the valence band, it would be that distance. Uh, so it's EV minus EFV over KT. Now if we assume quasi-neutrality or that N is equal to P, uh, we just need to set these two equations equal to each other. So 2 over root pi NC F1 half of A to C should be equal to 2 over root pi A to V or NV uh, F1 half uh, F1 half of A to V. And this looks like it's a function of two variables. So it, it looks like we're going to have a hard time, hard time figuring out what this is. But in fact, this A to C, so this distance here, 
we know if our Fermi splitting is equal to the band gap, it has to be the same as this distance here. Uh, and you can prove yourself to that mathematically, um, if not graphically, because this distance has to be the band gap, uh, and this distance is also the band gap. Uh, you could prove yourself, uh, you could prove this to yourself mathematically by just adding a to c and a to v. Uh, and what you'll get is if you say that delta EF is equal to EG, which is what we're looking for to find the transparency carrier density, then you'll find that a to v is equal to negative a to c. And so we can just replace that in this equation underneath. So now it's just the Fermi Dirac integral of minus a to c. And you could actually solve this on a computer, uh, and especially if you have access to Mathematica, uh, because this f one half function is just the poly logarithm, uh, was or uh, with some subtleties attached, but uh, it's just a built-in function that you can evaluate. Uh, but if you don't want to do that and you want to just use a regular old calculator, then we need to make some approximations. So since this valence band uh, Fermi level is above the valence band we can somewhat reliably make the Boltzmann approximation. So we can make the Boltzmann approximation, and that turns this expression on the right just equal to nv times e to the minus a to c. Because our Fermi Dirac integral, uh, so f1 half of some argument eta, is just going to be approximately equal to root pi over 2 times e to the eta or if we had minus eta, minus eta. Okay, and uh, on the right-hand side, we can also make what's called the Sommerfield, so Sommerfield approximation. Then this left-hand side turns into four over three root pi times nc times eta c to the three halves. And these two sides have to be equal to each other. So just as before, these two sides have to be equal to each other. And so all we need to do is solve, whoop, uh, all we need to do is solve this numerically. So we can solve it numerically. Uh, we can also solve it graphically if we want to uh, by just plotting these two sides. And if you actually plug in some values, so if you plug in that the whole mass is equal to 0.5, and the electron mass is equal to 0.067, and this is uh, as a fraction of the free electron mass, so as a fraction of the free electron mass. Uh, if you plug this in, you'll get a value for a to c of about 2.15. Now, if you were to use the exact equation, uh, you'd get a value for a to c of about 1.95, so the error isn't too much. Now we can plug in this value of a to c into our equation for the transparency carrier density, and you'll get a transparency carrier density for this example of about 1 times 10 to the 18 per cubic centimeter. And this is a fairly typical value. Uh, so this is a fairly typical value. And this is for an nc and nv, or our effective density of states that correspond to the masses that I gave you just now. If we were to use the exact value of a to c instead, we'd get a transparency carrier density of about 1.2 times 10 to the 18 per centimeter cubed. So it's about 20% error, which is not, uh, not tiny, but also not too bad. So now that we know how the carrier density n, uh, or equivalently p if we're assuming quasi-neutrality, now we know how this affects the absorption spectra. And so in future videos, we're going to worry more about the carrier dynamics. So how do we actually get these carriers into our semiconductor? How do we inject them? And what are the, what are the consequences of that? Where do they go? How do they move? So I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did, please give it a like below and subscribe to my channel. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, also please feel free to post those down below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.